Well, we're just rolling into southwestern Colorado. Coming out here to go, to go in and hunt some wild bone elk country. This is actually Chris's hunt. Um, this should end up being a pretty good hunt. We're down here. We're going to be hunting with Ryan Weimer. Well, here we go. Day one. You ready? I'm ready. It's like 5.30 in the morning. Yeah, but we've been up since uh, 4.30. 4 <clears throat> Those poor deer hunters I have to go a long ways from here. <laughs> but We're all settled into our... Nice cabin. Nice cabin. <clears throat> Chris is just getting the her final touches that she needs. Big one today? Probably not. <laughs> but anything is possible. <laughs> so we can just leave the gun home today? No. <laughs> nope. Alright. Let's get her done. Big bull. Big bull, baby. <laughs> Chris had been fighting a sinus infection for the past couple of weeks, which made it difficult for her to breathe, especially in higher altitudes. To make it easier on Chris, our game plan was to stay high on the ridges and glass deep into the canyons until we located a bull worthy of going after. This was a large unit that we were hunting. And even though we were hunting public land, I had hired Ryan Weimer to guide us. In a situation like this, where we had never even stepped foot on this unit, the knowledge of a local guide can be invaluable to your hunting success. Chris? Not a first table? <laughs> Cooking's good. No rush. Yeah, he gets better too. I don't like her stew. <laughs> That's a first day meal. Everybody. You know, she's going to hear that she said that. That's alright. She knows I don't like her stew. Chris has already harvested a couple of nice bulls, so on this particular hunt, she was determined to hold out for a bull would be packing more than 330 inches of total bone. Well, Chris. Let me 
think of that one? Now we can back to camp by then. <laughs> Even though this was a good bull, it was still not quite what Chris was looking for. We'll just keep looking. Finally, right at noon, we decided to check one last canyon before heading back to camp for lunch. As we sit there, Ryan quickly spotted what appeared to be a great bull, but he was a long ways off, so we had to head deeper into the canyon to try and get a better look. We closed the distance to just under 600 yards where our progress was finally stopped by a cliff. From this vantage point we were able to get a good look at the bull. As we looked the bull over we noticed right away that the bull had broken off three major points. But even being broken, we all agreed that this bull would definitely meet or exceed the benchmark Chris had set for this hunt. Now the only problem we still had was trying to find a way off of this cliff so that we could get down to the next bench and close the distance to within 400 yards. Luckily, not too far away, we were able to find a crevice in the cliff that we could shimmy down to get to the next bench level. Boy, I sure gotta hand it to Chris. Even as sick as she was feeling that day, she was quite the trooper. The determination, the tenacity and willingness she showed to do whatever it took to get in position just for a chance at this bull was simply amazing to watch. As we came to the next cliff, we realized that that was as close as we were going to be able to get. We were still just over 400 yards away, but Chris was confident that she could make that shot. The bull had no idea we were there as Chris set up for the shot. Like at the rain, remember to squeeze. Right there. Are you ready? Again, again. I can't find him. I only went to the ride about 50 yards. I can't see him. I know, we can't do it. Right there he is. As the bull disappeared into the timber, Chris was confident that she had hit him with both shots, but I wasn't so sure. After a minute of searching the timber, I was able to find the bull laying there, and sure enough, he had been hit. Chris set up for another shot to see if she could put him down for good. Watch close as she launches a bullet through a one-foot opening at just over 425 yards. That looked like it hit him. Oh, he's dead. He just forced his fell over. <laughs> he just tipped over. He's upside down. Is that? I swear to God, he's upside down. Oh, 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 oh. Just got my bull. He's clear across the canyon, so we've actually got to hike out of this one, drive all the way around, then come down on us. Um, got a couple hours left of daylight, but might be using flashlights. We'll see. So what happens when you kill big bulls? Especially in the ledges, huh? BBD, baby. Now we just gotta get out of here. The crazy thing is, is we're still getting out of the, the first canyon that we're in. <laughs> Drive around and go to the next canyon. We just finally made it up that ridge, or hill, mountain, more like it. Shot from right over there on that knob is where I shot from. The bowl is actually clear across on that other ridge and just to the left. <coughs> so we've got to drive around, come all the way down that ridge, 
Well, I don't know, and then down there. It's gonna be a long night. <laughs> <laughs> I think. We're but it was fun. Yeah. It was fun. Getting the packs on. <laughs> Right nope. there's right, right there's the head pack mule. Nope. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Darcy's the head pack mule. <laughs> She's gonna be guiding us all. <laughs> Chris still wasn't feeling very good, but she insisted on going down in the canyon with us to pack the bull out. What do you think of that? Even with 25 to 30 inches of antler broken off, Chris's bull was still packing 330 inches of total bone. A little bigger than you was thinking? Well, we're up here in southwestern Colorado with Weimer hunting. Uh, Ryan's our guide here, and Chris just knocked down a heck of a bull last night. Well, I guess yesterday afternoon. Um, she ended she ended up shooting it from clear across the canyon and we actually had to go clear it was an hour drive around to get to this point up here and hike down to him just to get him gutted out last night and taken care of but uh, she made a heck of a shot on him and then a finishing shot but why don't you go ahead and tell us how it all unfolded Chris well it was in the middle of the day yesterday and Ryan stopped up on the ridge on the other side of the mountain and said wow that looks like a nice bowl and so we we actually hiked down quite a ways and went through some rock ledges and stuff to get down to a spot that I could take a shot and I got a shot off and he come up in the trees you can see it's pretty thick and he lay down and so it took us a little while to find him <clears throat> once we found him we I got another shot in him and finished him off but by the time we were able to locate him it was getting it was getting you know mid-afternoon and stuff so by the time we hiked all the way back out and they, we drove all the way around and Nathan and Ryan came down and cleaned him out and stuff and then we hiked down here this morning to get the rest of it taken care of and it's been a really fun hunt. And now the real work begins, huh? Absolutely. So once, once again, you know, appreciate it. It's been, Anytime, guys. been our pleasure Thank hunting you. with you and, and uh, you know, you guys want a good hunt out here in southwestern Colorado, get a hold of Ryan here and and he'll hook you up. Weimer hunting, awesome place to be, great camp, great facility, good cooking. Yep. Um, we have no complaints. This is just... You can go elk or deer or mountain lion yep. with these guys. So Absolutely. Good time. Appreciate it. <laughs> for more information on joining the Weimer's hunting camp for a hunting trip this fall, call the number above. We would also like to thank our sponsors, Primos Hunting Calls, Speak the Language, Big Cat Taxidermy, Bringing Your Animals to Life, Hunter's Trailhead Application Service, Your Hunt Begins and Ends at the Trailhead, and Dale Norty Outdoors, the home of the Optic Belt.